gosh. Originally, this car was a survivor car. And in reality today, it's still a survivor car. It just has been through a lot. 1971, 426 Hemi, automatic. 48, made. Burned every square inch. Melted, molten, all but forgotten. But like the Phoenix rising up out of the ashes, our 1971 Hemi Cuda will be back. It will be on the road and it will be breaking hearts like it was intended to do on the day it was made. That is Graveyard Cars. On this episode. This is the most iconic muscle car on the planet. The culmination of a four year restoration and the greatest challenge the ghouls have ever faced. It was sad. The glass even melted. A 1971 Hemi Cuda caught in an explosion. 911, what's your emergency? and completely incinerated. It burned to the ground. But the owner never gave up. Now, with nearly every hurdle cleared, this epic race will come to a close. Witness the reveal of this incredible transformation with the owner who survived the fire to bring his beloved Cuda back from the ashes. Unbelievable. More than a legend, this is the mythic Phoenix Cuda. Coming to get you, Barbara. Buried deep in the Pacific Northwest, one team in Springfield, Oregon, takes on the impossible, finding dead Mopar muscle and bringing it back from the grave. Award-winning master of Mopar, Mark Warman, his cousin Doug, his daughter Alyssa, his best friend Royal, his painter Will, his assembly tech, Justin and the rest of the GYC ghouls are restoring, resurrecting, and recreating some of the fastest, fiercest, and rarest muscle cars on the planet. This is Graveyard Cars. Well, here we are. We got a 71 Hemi Cuda that is finished. And if there was ever a car with a story, I think it's this one. It had a backstory before it ever caught on fire and burned to the ground. It was part of Wendell's life. He had found the car and bought it and cleaned it up. It was kind of a survivor, although I did see where it had been painted previously and it had a little bit of work done to it, but it was a nice car and it had a nice life and it allowed a lot of people to enjoy it. That was the point behind these cars. It wasn't until the explosion that really all the dreams of the car and the owner really came to a crashing halt. One day, May, it was about May 20th, 1999, and a buddy of mine and I went and met at my shop after dinner about seven o'clock and we went in there and one of the cars had leaked gas all day long. And the dripping gas had vaporized and there was only a small puddle on the floor, but the air was filled with gas. And I walked in and started opening doors and windows, probably as most people would do to air out the gas fumes. And there was a spark and the spark caused an explosion. It blew all the doors and windows off the building. It blew the garage door across the street through the neighbor's fence. The friend that was with me got blown out into the street and had third degree burns. When I heard the flash of the fire, <laughs> I, um, I dove on the ground and the building exploded. There were uh, paint cans. The paint cans were exploding in the air and it was just a big ball of fire. And I was lucky, I was on the floor face down and. I crawled out of the I crawled out the door that had blown off the building, but in the aftermath, I I was watched everything burn up. When they opened the trailer and rolled it out, and seeing that the torsion bar had broken from the heat of the fire, I knew we had our hands full. But my impression didn't change from the idea that I knew we could save the car. You didn't let the insurance company total it, which is what 99% of the rest of the world would have just took the check and totaled it. Nope, I want a clean title. It's my car and it's coming back to life. And I'm very grateful that, that you said, I want to do this car. 
Justin and I disassembled this car and it was sad. Everything was cooked and it made the disassembly that much harder because things were covered with ashes or melted plastic. So Doug and I tackled the disassembly of this car. There was a lot of extra work just to get this thing torn apart. Not as in the, the nuts and bolts were frozen. They actually came apart pretty easy. It's everything on this car that was plastic, fiberglass or whatever was just melted and draped over just just dripping wherever it was at. The glass even melted. It was just a lot of extra work breaking stuff out of the way just to get to nuts and bolts to get the thing torn apart. This is the 1969 Dodge Coronet, the best intermediate value of 1969. There's no mistaking the strong, eye-catching character of Coronet's bold new grille. It is distinctively different. And just as different and dramatic are these new triple tail-like clusters. The same is true for this eye-catching side treatment with wide full-length sill and lip moldings on Coronet 500 and RT models and dark contrasting paint underneath. New side marker reflectors and new fender-mounted turn signals add a bright touch of newness, day or night. It all adds up to a winning look on the outside for Coronet in the fastest group of cars the industry has to sell. You know, the car obviously looked really rough, but you don't know what you have till it comes back from the dipper. Boy, so, oh, so far, so good. Oh my gosh, if this is what I think, we just jumped ahead six months. So the car comes back, inner structure, the floors, absolutely beautiful car to start with. The car, from a structural standpoint, front inner fenders, firewall, upper cowl, radiator support, that's very important because their numbers exist in that. Main floor, outer rockers, the left and right rear rails, left and right front rails, all of that stuff was really nice on the car. So it allowed us to move it through the metal shop without having to start from the very, very beginning. We did end up having to replace a lot of the metal, bolt-on fenders, bolt-on doors, no big deal. We did end up doing a roof skin on it, both quarters, rear body panel, trunk floor. And not all of it was just as a result of the fire, but it had some rust that was hidden underneath that paint job I told you it had. So at one point I took a flashlight in there and you could see through the panel that it was kind of peppered with rust. But overall, it was not the worst car in the world we've had for metal, primarily because the substructure of the car was nice. Got the B, the one, 396800. So I know that that's right. True numbers matching is everything. So in this particular case, you've got original fender tags, original broadcast sheet, original dash, VIN, upper radiator support, upper cowl panel, all the body numbers are original. The original serial number on the engine and the transmission, all of that was there. Will, so second best painter in the world all right, right there. Oh, very yeah. cool. Second, hey, good. Good. I'm going to critique. Oh, please yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> It'll have to be perfect. Absolutely perfect. With a little orange peel in it, like it comes from the factory. Right. Oh, you want the you want the original look. You yeah. don't want the super slick, shiny. Hey, this is a really rare car. It, it needs. Are you really going to do that? I'm going to have to call Jennifer at PPG and ask exactly how what we want to lay that out. I'll with, just so. let you paint it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. You know. If you want the nice orange peel look, yeah, Mark yeah. will take care of that. So yeah. this is great. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, what do you think, Will? There's some paint left in that trunk. I know, that's what I was looking at. It's the baddest car we have here. You know, everybody had a huge hand in this. The paint shop, not as much, because there was such extensive metal work to be done. But once the metal work was all done, we got it over to my team where we got the Bondo done, primer, and started going that direction. So when it comes to down to this car getting over to me in the paint shop, you know, it's, it's your standard procedure. We go in, get all the primer blocked out, get our jam work done, get the engine compartment, all the same stuff. But with this car, a 71 B5 Blue is a very rich color. The prep work has to be perfect and it absolutely just came out gorgeous when it was all done. I'm very proud of this car and the fact it's going to Wendell makes it even better. You know, you look at Will working in there on that CUDA and 
following it through the shop and making sure all the panels are on it when he painted it. That car meant a lot to him. Wendell's a great guy, I can't say that enough. He, he's been down here every Christmas, no matter how late we are. He comes down and says, Merry Christmas. He brings everybody gift cards. And that touches people because they get to hear his story, his survivor story of him too, also living through the fire, plus the cancer that he had later. It's really a neat moment for me to watch Will perform the work that he did on this car and know that I didn't have to pick anything apart, nothing. I didn't, I didn't find anything. I didn't walk in and say, here's a scratch underneath the clear uh, 320 scratch that you missed. The car is impeccable and it's beautiful. It looks like glass. That car needed to look like glass. So it's kudos to Will for really taking above and even beyond. Ultimately, they'll all look like that. I'm not saying some of them don't look like that. He just nailed it the first time out. The model lineup for Coronet 500 remains unchanged for 1969. Besides the two-door hardtop, this convertible and the 500 four-door sedan is also offered. Another important area of the Coronet's strength lies in the muscle cars, Super B and Coronet RT. These popular cars are respected at every major track and drag strip in the country. Super B's standard engine continues to be the special 383 cubic inch Magnum V8. The 426 Hemi is optional and the four-speed Hurst shifter is standard. A two-door hardtop and convertible continue to make up the Coronet RT lineup. The 440 Magnum engine is standard and the 426 Hemi is optional. Before we could even work on the engine, we had to get it cleaned up. I steam cleaned everything before I even brought it in for disassembly. Okay, see if you can find a socket that fits the head bolts right there. The engine was pretty nasty from being wet and sitting for all those years. But I was pleasantly surprised at how easily it came apart. I would have expected rusted bolts and broken metal, but it actually came apart pretty easily. Doug was working with his helper on that one, uh, the guy that used to work here. They got that disassembled. It was quite a project to get it disassembled because it was so dirty and grimy and had the rust in it and things like that. But they did a good job of getting it apart and immediately this was kind of like that most recent Hemi we talked about. We needed to know now, we needed to know today, not in two years from now, what the condition of that block is. So they did get it disassembled and sent off to the machine shop. They sent the engine back. Everything came back great on a good, clean bill of health. It didn't even need a sleeve. I believe that we ended up boring at 60 thousands over, and the rest of the engine is stock. The engine went back together no problem. Wendell provided us with the correct intake and valve covers that were damaged from the fire. All of our cars are important to us because they're important for the customers. But this one really touched my heart and never felt like a job for me. The three amigos sailing again. Here we go. Let's install an engine, a transmission, and a what? 71 Cuda. What size engine? 426. How many horsepower? 425. Who's going to drive you home tonight? Let's do this thing. So when it comes to installing the drivetrains, we've been doing it for years. The Hemis are bigger, so it's a little less room to work, but I don't worry about it. This is like our fourth or fifth Hemi. No worries at all. You know, when you're putting a car together, especially one like this, it's a relief to be working with people that know what they're doing, that the right hand knows what the left one's doing and they're grabbing those tools for you. You already know and he already knows you need the upper control arm bolts in place so you turn around, Doug's handing you a wrench. I give everybody a lot of crap for it, but it's a really well-oiled machine from that standpoint. It, it also is fun when you get to work with your friends and people that you know and that you love. Doug and Royal, they are no saints whatsoever. I deal with their insanity daily and you have no idea, but when that camera comes on, you know, it's just gee golly type mentality, and that's not who they are. Now, I agree with Will. Doug is nuts, completely insane. Every day he proves more craziness to me. He was on it for eight seconds before he went down. Broke that's, his face. When was that? That's because he decided to take a phone call on his cell phone in the middle of riding the unicycle for the first time in 50 years. Anyway. You know, we reminisce a lot. We waste a lot of time on graveyard cars talking and telling stories, but I mean, that's what graveyard cars is. The big Dana, did any of our cars have Danas in them? I don't, nope. mine, mine certainly one. didn't. Yours had an eight and three quarter. Dougie's had an eight and three quarter with a one-legger in it. That was a 391 Pause the Track. No, 
It was yeah. a 391 yeah. one legger. Well, 391 sure grip. Sorry. People don't just watch it for the tech. I know some of you do, but some of you watch it because they like that human interaction. And they all have a crazy cousin like Dougie or a crazy cousin like me if you are Dougie. They have crazy friends like Royal, and we all kind of relate to them and say, hey, this is like so-and-so, watch this, honey. It's about the family enjoying what we're doing while we're enjoying what we're doing. To me, that's just like the perfect mix. How much have you learned? What engine is standard equipment in the 1969 Super B? 383 Magnum? 440 Magnum or the 426 Hemi? Do you think you know the correct answer? Stay tuned after these messages to find out. Welcome back. So, do you think you know the correct answer? What engine is standard equipment in the 1969 Super B? 383 Magnum, 440 Magnum or the 426 Hemi? If you guessed correctly, then you said the 383 Magnum. The Coronet RT came standard with the 440 Magnum and both models of Coronet were available with the powerful 426 Hemi. In addition, a moderately priced fresh air Ram Charger hood with air scoop is optional for both Super B and Coronet RT models and standard with a Hemi engine. This system takes in cold outside air through the hood-mounted scoops and feeds it directly into the engine. Attractive wood grain inserts are standard on Coronet 500 and RT models for an extra touch of elegance, as is this attractive new optional chrome stamped road wheel and trim ring. Remember what the Iceman says, Ford and Chevy suck, and I hate them. So once this car's a roller, it becomes my baby. That's true. I'm like everybody here. This car is so cool and it has such a great backstory that it didn't even feel like I was working on the car because it was so fun. Don't get me wrong, there's always a lot of stress when working on a freshly painted car. And on top of that, the car is worth a million dollars or more. So I just took my time and put this thing together. All right, so the billboard decals came in. Mark gave me the go ahead to get these things installed on the car. Just using the soapy water solution. And then if you guys ever watched that episode where uh, Will and Alyssa tried to attempt to put these decals on, they got the backing paper wet. And that was two people. Do you remember me saying not to get that part of it wet? So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just taping this down so I can peel this backing paper off, get my soapy solution on the back side of this so I don't screwed up like they did. Sorry, Will, sorry, Alyssa. Oh, hey, Will. Oh, I know. You sure? Cause yes, I know that. Then how? I don't know. So why is this happening? I lay it back down. <laughs> wow, we made it far before we had to get my dad. So what I'm looking for here is even spacing from the wheel opening and up here. So you just gotta kinda move it around, just get that right position. So for one of the reasons why I'm using the soapy water solution is this is such a big decal, the uh, application gel usually sets up pretty quick. So the soapy water lasts a lot longer. So if you need to make adjustments, you can still do that and it won't just dry on you super quick. Looks good right there. Just gonna go and start tacking this down. Work my way with this way and work my way that way. So Wendell is such a nice guy. He's salt of the earth. He really cares about the people that are working on his car. You don't see a lot of people like that. And this car, you can just tell it means so much to him by how he treats the people working on his car. This car, to him, you know, just seeing the old interviews, because I wasn't working here at the time, seeing the old interviews, how much it tore him apart seeing his car 
just burned up in that state. And this car just means a lot to me working on it because it means so much to him. Justin has really grown into being a great technician. Growing up, I always worked on cars with my dad. As soon as I was old enough to hold a screwdriver, I was out there with my dad. You know, it, it's so important to me because it was like just such a bonding time. Now I'm able to work with my son. He started out here a little bit rough, but we knew that because he really didn't have any formal shop experience. He hadn't been in a shop, he'd worked with his dad. And I remember when I was working at home on 14th Street out of my garage. I thought I was a great mechanic and then I went to work for JCPenney Auto Center, found out I was a terrible mechanic because all the things that I would cut corners on at home aren't acceptable out here in the commercially acceptable world. But he's made all those changes. Like my dad would, you know, he'd set me in the garage and he'd have a spare door for just a, a random truck or a car and then he'd take a hammer to it and smash it. And then he'd go, fix it. So <laughs> I would be out there, I'd be on the backside and hammering out the little dent and doing all the body work and then prime it and then show him and then he'd come back and you know hey this is what you need to work on this this and that so I started off with body work and then just kind of worked my way and bought my own car when I was 15 a 72 charger and then restored that myself so cars are just really important to me it's always been a bonding time with my father now it's a bonding time with my son where's the alternator Yeah, good job. Where's the distributor? Right there. Good job. Where's the air cleaner? Right there. Good job. Literally, literally fell right. I mean, when I put it in there, the two lines fell into the master Because I pre-fit it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody awfully good at this stuff. He did a phenomenal job on the car. It's absolutely stunning. Look at everything he's done from the decals, the emblems, the nameplates that he put on it. He had to build the car basically from a freshly painted car. So whether it was the grill assembly under the hood, the power brake booster assemblies, the decals, the glass, name it. He put all that car together. So when you look at it and you see it in these final pictures that are coming up, you have to give credit to each and every department and you even have to give it to the assembly shop. Even though it's the funnest part, it's still a lot of work. Dodge presents the Turd Twins versus the all-new sexy, sleek, and tough 1970 Challenger. Let's take a look at why the Challenger is the right choice for 1970. Camaro offers six engines from a 230 Cube 6 to a 396 V8. Firebird has a choice of seven mils from a 250 Cube 6 to a 400 Ram Air 4 V8. Engine-wise, no car in the industry outranges Challenger. From a 225 Cube Slant 6 to a full 440 Cubes in a six-pack or Magnum. And if you're crazy over horses, how about 425 from a Hell for Leather Hemi? Camaro has a coil spring front suspension, likewise with the Fire Chicken. But what front springs does GM put on its expensive Cadillac Eldorado? Torsion bar suspension. The 1970 Challenger has torsion bars up front as well for true sports car control and handling. You know, one of the things I wanted to do, we had two days of sunshine, I wanted to get the car out and road test it. Very important, because when Wendell comes to pick it up, it's supposed to rain all the time he's here, so I know he can't take it out and drive it. You gotta shake these cars out. So I took the car out, I leave the shaker off if it's a shaker hood car, because you gotta be able to get into those carburetors and adjust them, and it's a pain in the ass to take that shaker off just to set the carburetors. So I leave that off, so you see me driving around, it's also kind of a cool shot, because you can see that engine working down in there. Now, just for the record, we do test drive it with the shaker on as well. But I will say, whether it's destiny or not, that car was amazing. We put a lot of cars together. We've had them start up and run really nice. We've had other ones fight us. A lot of engines fight us. How about the one that had the sand poured down in it? That's a great example. Doug knows all about this stuff. Things fight you. But this thing, from the time I started it, every drive, every turn, every bump I went over, I thought this was as close to a miracle for not having to go back with a punch list, 20 or 30 items, 
there were no items. So this is where we're at. The car has finally made it back to being a car again. It's complete, it's ready to deliver to the customer. I expect that window's going to be moved. I have shared some pictures with him. When you have a car for four years, you need to keep people posted on stuff. But there is nothing, I promise you folks, like when you roll a car cover off of a freshly restored car. And when you're a guy like Wendell and you remember what the car looked like not that long ago, I expect that he will be moved and that he will be appreciative. But I honestly think he'll be surprised at the quality. My name is Wendell Malmberg, and in May of 1999, there was a gasoline explosion in my shop at my house. In the garage was my 1971 Hemi Cuda. It burned, literally burned to the ground. After 20 years of time, I finally sent something to Mark Warman at Graveyard Cars, and he agreed to do the job. And I feel that this shop was the only place that was available that could bring that car back to life. And that's why I'm here today, is to see my car restored. Love Wendell to death. He's a great guy. And he's seen pictures on social media, or Mark has sent them and whatnot. But there's such a dramatic difference in a picture and actually seeing your car that's been destroyed for 25 years for the first time. I haven't been in a lot of reveals, but honestly, I am looking forward to this one. There was a time after the car was burned up that I, you know, I wrapped it up and I saved it and I couldn't even go look at the car. It was, it was protected, but it, it was such a discouragement that I didn't believe it could be repaired until I talked to Mark and I understood that he could bring that car back to life. I only had the car, was able to drive it maybe a dozen times before the actual fire happened. So when I get the car back now, I'll be able to drive it, take it to the local car shows, and take it to places where people can really enjoy it and see the fine work that was done at Graveyard Cars. You got Cadillacs? <laughs> I, got I got Cadillacs in my eyes. <laughs> What? I don't know what's going on. Didn't you just say I look better? Yeah. Oh, you look kind of crazy there, though. You look like Cher. Yeah. I don't understand tray cam. It's ridiculous. It's to appease Mark. It, it's just to torture people. I absolutely hate the tray cam. It's my tray cam. You like my tray cam? Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is it. Been waiting 21 years, how many, how many years? 23 years. 23 years. 23 years, can you imagine that? And it's been here six months, so I mean, this wow. is- Wow, <laughs> that's impressive. Well, you don't have you to- You know, time, time flies time by your- Time flies. Time just flies. Like an arrow. Unbelievable. You remember when his car came in? Yeah. Burned to the ground, Royal? Yep. Ready to unveil your 1971 Hemicude, all numbers matching. That's impressive. You're excited, right? I am wow. excited. Right. It's been a long time. It has, and you've earned every penny and of this. And I believe that you are the only person on the planet that could have restored this burned up car. Yeah. No, he didn't restore it. Who did? Well, <laughs> our, our metal shop did all the metal work. Okay. Who supervised it? Who bought the parts? You know, it I'm was not... the, the crew here. You this is right? your shop and your Thank crew you. that very, you put very together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is this the only place it could have been done? That's right. I mean, let's be yeah, real. Let's just. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. The Challenger looks much wider than the Camaro and Firebird, two inches wider than the Turd Twins. Let's take a look at the rear end of the Camaro. Just look at that ugly bumper. It looks rather skimpy, and that's because those bumpers have been around for a while. However, the 1970 Challenger has an all new rear bumper. How's this for heads up styling? Deep contoured door panel. The armrest is recessed with a new style paddle grip door handle. 
and the all-new door locking lever that replaces the old push button that used to sit on top of the door, like it still does on this fire chicken. This ugly black molding is a Firebird feature the Challenger doesn't have. Just look at the Challenger's clean lines, no seams. This optional bright cowl surround molding is available on all models. Are you going to reveal this or what? We are actually going I to can't. reveal it. I'm waiting. We're going to. He saw the car for many, many years in the burn state. He knows what it looked like before it was in the burn state. So I'd be lying if I said I'm not a little bit nervous about that personal impression, what happens when you do roll it off. It should be absolute insanity. You should just say that's the greatest thing in the world. You think you know what a customer's going to do, but that's when you get in trouble. I'm anxious to see what his reaction to this car is. I'm Going impatient. To. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. Do it, gentlemen. Unroll it. Oh my God. Wow. 1971 such a hemispherical so Cuda. Beautiful. Its own body style, by the way, Hemi Cuda. That's a pretty wow. Is yeah, that is different. amazing? Just yeah, take it in, it take it in. Unbelievable. It's a beautiful blue. It's, it's hard to describe the feeling. I've had a lot of highs and lows waiting for this moment. It's absolutely gorgeous. When I saved it 20 some years ago, I always believed that this could be done, but actually seeing it, it's really, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to believe. I, I know I was there when the car burned up. It's everything I hoped it would be. Watching Wendell see his car for the first time obviously gets everybody choked up. He's by far one of our best clients. It's, and it's, tr it's true with him, it's very heartfelt, and he loves that car, it's his baby and I'm proud that this whole team was able to finish that car for him. I'm very excited to give him his car back. I love you to death, Wendell, and drive the wheels off of it. That's, <laughs> that That's nuts? unbelievable. That's crazy we were able to do that, Dad. It right. is, uh, it's, it really, truly has, there's no words to describe it. Seeing the car today is shocking. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the work that was done. And I believe the team at Graveyard Cars is the only team that could have brought this restoration to the point it is today. It's a beautiful car. That color outside is just a gorgeous, gorgeous car. Seeing that thing go and go to him, couldn't be more proud of everybody here. What that car looked like when it got dropped off, I don't know how long it was here for, but when it got loaded up, you know, he dropped it off in that exact same spot and he picked it up in that exact same spot. If you look at the car, it's, it's gorgeous. It's everything that it always was before. It's been restored to the glory that it should be. It was burned up. It was burned to the it ground and there was up. nothing left. And now you look at it. Wow. And it's absolutely stunning. Unbelievable. This car being restored is the end of all of the trauma that was involved after I bought the car here to be repaired. I was diagnosed with. I'm, I was, I just gotta gather my thoughts here a little bit. After I brought the car here, I was diagnosed with stage four melanoma cancer. I had three brain tumors. I had a tumor in my lung, and both lungs, and I had a tumor in my liver. And uh, I was diagnosed as terminal. And I was offered a trial medication. And I did the, I did the clinical trial, and that's why I'm here today. So the car and I are both survivors. What a wonderful story of surviving. Not only did Wendell survive the fire, and we obviously saved the car, but his story about having cancer literally had me in tears. It's perfect. Look at, look <laughs> look at, at all the, the style look lines at, and the gaps are better the gaps, than they ever were from the yeah, factory. Perfect. Yep. Will did do a really nice job painting. Thank you, can, you, sir. You can see everything. And you see every got, light, the it's LED got depth lights. In it. It's very outstanding. Uh, the coolest the part. One, <laughs> the one and only Hemi Cuda. And the gills and the fenders, those are 
871 has got to be the most it's iconic the best. muscle car ever <laughs> Without built. Without question. This is a dream come true. I mean, come on, guys, look at this. This is the most iconic muscle car on the planet. A 71 Hemi Cuda. There were only 48 automatics. It's one of seven B5 Blue. One of four with black billboards. It was ordered with a leather interior and super track pack and a stereo package. It is one of a kind car. It's the most iconic Hemi muscle car on the planet. I mean, come on, everybody's gotta love this car. That's what I'm talking about. Carry on, my wayward son. What is oh, he doing right here now? He comes. Tell us what your thoughts are <laughs> on this car it? right okay. now. <laughs> Do you like it? What are your thoughts? It's a beautiful car. Can you not? You gonna get in and drive it away? Justin? Yeah. Do you like it? Wow. Yeah, I love the car. Not the camera, though. <laughs> Wendell? You know, I retired at the end of last year. And so my goal going forward is to take this car to car shows and to show it to the rest of the world and let everybody else enjoy the quality of this car and to see it in person because there aren't very many Hemi Kudas left. So, have you been following along? True or false, the Challenger, Camaro, and Firebird all share the exact same width. Do you think you know the answer? Stay tuned after these messages to find out. Welcome back. Let's see who's been paying attention. True or false, the Challenger, Camaro, and Firebird all share the exact same width. If you guessed false, you are right. The Challenger is actually two inches wider than the Brand X Dungmobiles. And everyone knows that the extra two inches of elbow room can make a big difference. And for you sports car lovers, you of all drivers would appreciate Challenger's instrumentation. A clean layout, easy to read with real honest to gosh gauges with fuel, temperature, alternator, and oil pressure. This articulated wiper arm fans out the sweeping arc. It gives the driver a visibility bonus. The last word in door openers, the Challenger's new paddle type handle with integrated key lock. Feel free to hop in, open up the door, set, have a seat for the first time in 23 or four years. I uh, don't even know what to say. It looks pretty hot. Oh man. Wow. You know, I waited a long time to get this car back, and uh, by far this is the best thing that's happened. You know, it was well worth the wait, and I'm very grateful to the team at Graveyard Cars. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. Is that gorgeous? It looks new, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it's brand new. <laughs> it's a brand new car. It's unbelievable. Bring, bring back some memories. Wow. Unbelievable. So we've replaced the original starting instructions that you would have seen on the turn. Those probably weren't there when you got it. No, they weren't there. Yeah, cheers, the enjoy, carpet, my friend. The carpet was all moldy. The seats were had stuff <laughs> impacted in it. There was a hole from the mouse they had a headliner hole right there. Yeah. It's got 10 miles on it, Mark. I'm sorry. Where have you been? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me. We got to make sure it runs right. You know, I give Mark a lot of crap. I do, but he really is a good dude. I know what he charged Wendell for this car, and I know what he was in to the car restoration. And they didn't line up, but it's for moments like these that just make it worth it. There's your original, uh, how you get the key out of the ignition. That's lock amazing. instructions. That's cool, that's the little details. Yeah. Our new dash pad, Justin restored the dash assembly on this one because we were running out of time. It looks absolutely Beautiful. gorgeous. Yeah, your like brand new. AM, FM works. All the speakers Multi work. Multiplex cereal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I was ordered that way. It had a mouse hole up here when it sat outside. A mouse ate a hole in the headliner. It, did it ever look like this when you got it? It never looked like this. Amazing. It's perfect. Yeah, you know, what we do on these cars is the result of dedication and knowledge and experience, and pride. What Wendell's been through is the result of having courage having the guts to stand up and fight, take an experimental drug because your life depends on it. What do you think, guys? Came out gorgeous. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. Love it. So nice. It's beautiful.
beautiful. Probably yeah. our favorite car to date now, just because it's so burned so bad and it was so rough yeah. that now here it is Unbelievable. back. Unbelievable. Yeah, I didn't it's think just it, amazing. I didn't think it. Look at like the original this. pictures. Just it's, how long was the car here for? I think three. Was it three years, did Wendell? How long did it take? That's what you me, yeah. The I quoted in three years. That's all that matters. Weren't okay. the firemen just walking on the hood, just trying to put the yeah, fire they were out? Trying, the isn't ceiling? that why yeah. the whole back end was? There it is. They were pulling the ceiling down out of the Jeez. up above the car. They were pulling the ceiling down to look for a fire in the ceiling. Wow. wow. There it is. Wow, that that's looked, incredible. Looked that bad when it came in too. It's not very often so many elements are involved. A guy who's fought to survive cancer, who fought and survived through the explosion, the car that was burned to the ground. Now we can all borrow a branch from that tree. I don't care who you are or how old you are. There are people that are fighting right now with things in their lives, health issues, family issues and things, but there's only one answer and it's to fight. That's the first that car you and I tore apart together, Doug. Yeah. That's amazing. That's a tough one, wasn't it? That is, yeah. huh? Yeah. So this one, this one's a full, full circle car for me. What do you think? Fire it up? Oh gosh, yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah. I've already warmed it up. <laughs> I'll tell looks, you that right it's now. It's brand new again. I know it does. It Listen looks great. Listen to the factory buzzer, the idiot yeah. warning. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah, look at the how depressed the... key button works. Yeah. yeah. And the Listen iconic shaker bubble. There's a reason they call it a shaker. Yes, <laughs> Did you think you'd be sitting behind the wheel? Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Sounds Dougie? great. Sounds great. great. Come here, Dougie. Yes, Mark. This is Wendell. Have you met him? I have. Hi, Doug. Yes, hi, Wendell. Thank you Good for to putting see my you. motor together. You oh, did a man. great job. It was my pleasure. This is so much, Thank Wendell. You. Thank you it's for your pleasure. Yeah. Appreciate Justin. Yeah. You've met Wendell. Oh, hey. How you doing? <laughs> hi, Justin. Hey, how are you liking it? Hey, thank you for putting the car together. Oh, man, it was a blast. This is one of my favorite ones. You built the dash. Yep. It's perfect. We stored everything on that. Very good to see you. <laughs> Hi, Alyssa. It's nice to see you again. Uh, please, thank you so much for taking my phone call. <laughs> you were the one that started this project. Aww. Aww. You know that, right? Aww. Yeah. Oh, I'm really happy we could be a part of it. You called me. No, you're going to make me out. cry. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you hadn't called me for your dad, this never would have happened. He's the best testament to the enduring spirit of man is fight. Don't even consider any alternative. So I hope he enjoys this car for many years to come. I love you, Wendell. You're an awesome guy. I'm so happy you're Great in love can, with the car. Yeah, Dad, you remember you, that? Can you not ruin me. a good moment? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not ruining a good ruining moment. This is capturing a good moment. I'm sorry. That's okay. Wendell knows we love him. <laughs> Beautiful car. Oh, thanks, Ryle. Oh, you bet. Oh, you bet. Come on out, Wendell. Oh, I get to leave now? Good. <laughs> See you guys later. I would like to say thank you to Mark Warman, to his team, to all the people that work here at Graveyard Cars, and to all the people that work for the film crew that make Graveyard Cars. Thank you, Wendell. Yeah. Beautiful. Love you, brother. So thank you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Good to see you. Without everybody as a team, this job couldn't be done.